so we were talking about compensation in Workday. So yesterday, we talked about what is compensation in Workday right? And then we also saw about, we talked about this, that compensation consists of the base salary and hourly plans, etc., allowances, stock plans, etc. And it is a rate per frequency. Compensation is not the actual wages in the employee's paycheck because of deductions right, and compensation may include one-time payments and stock grants as well. Compensation is assigned to employees only. No compensation is assigned to contingent workers. And then we also came to know that if you are eligible for a compensation plan does not mean that it is assigned to you, okay, I mean assigned to an employee. Or even if an employee is assigned to the compensation plan does not mean that the employee will eventually get an actual payment for it. Right. So we talked about all these things. Then we discussed about the overall structure, saying that the compensation package is the overall high-level object and, with a compensation package, consists of guidelines and plans. Guidelines are for reference only. Guidelines will contain consist of grades and grade profiles. Right. And what is a grade? It's a, it's a page or a range of pay right. Which gives you a guideline about how much you should pay for that particular, like criteria, if the worker meets that particular criteria right. And then we have plans. Plans are the different components for which an employee will get paid. And then we have the element. The element is the link between compensation in H, C, M and payroll in Workday. This is the actual heading under which an employee will get paid right. So this is. These are some of the things that we discussed yesterday, and then we started talking about the compensation eligibility rules. Now, what is a compensation eligibility rule? It is. Why is it used for? What is it used for a compensation eligibility rule? It is used to. An eligibility rule is used to define the population of workers who are eligible for a certain competition right. So because we will not assign the compensation to each worker's one. I mean manually, one by one. We will create a rule such that anybody who satisfies those conditions defined in those rules, they will get that particular compensation component. Like, for example, what rule shall we write? If you want to give a salary, a salary, salary should be given to whom? All employees, right. Can we say, all employees, all employees should be getting a salary? Some of them may be hourly employees as well, correct? But let's say we still are giving salary. And let's say it's a we. Let's say we do not have any hourly employees. For everybody, we are giving a salary. So in that case, how will we write the rule? Now let's say, if we are going to give a shift allowance, yeah, we were talking about, let's say, shift allowance. So who all are going to get a shift allowance? And you said that maybe the workers who are working on a shift, right? Third shift. Second shift. Whoever is not, whoever is working outside office hours in a shift, kind of a job profile, maybe the other ones who will get a shift shift allowance. Now what about, let's say, a special kind of special kind of allowance? For example, let's say commute allowance, a commuter allowance, or maybe a transport allowance. Who are you going to give a transport allowance? Maybe who are, maybe who have a travel kind of job. Maybe, maybe the salespeople right. Maybe the salespeople have a traveling kind of job. So maybe you define that, okay, this is a salesperson, knowing this job profile is for sales, so they will get a travel allowance. Okay, what about, let's say, commission plans or commissions? Who typically get commissions? Which which team the sales team? Right, typically, the salespeople get commissions. So when you, when you create a sales, when you create a commission plan, 
you will base it on on the on-the-job profile, which says sales right, something like that. So it is a business decision whom you are going to give a certain allowance, and based on that decision, we will write our eligibility rules. So eligibility rules are a set of rules that will define who is eligible for a compensation component, correct? So yesterday we created a compensation eligibility rule, and what did we do with that? What was the rule that we created? We created executive vice president, right? So let's go for, let's go for, let's find it out. So we will. We can find it out using edit. Compensation eligibility rule, right, you can find out existing compensation eligibility rules using this. I mean, you also have a view task, but I am using the edit. So let me start with. So all executive vice presidents, and how did I write the rule? I wrote the rule saying that first of all I used a field, the field that contains the management level. Management level is equal to executive vice president. This is what I wrote. Okay, this is a rule that I have created yesterday. Now, let's make it specific to our supervisory organization hierarchy. Right, I don't care about all the executive vice presidents in the system. I only care about the executive vice presidents in the WWXYZ Motors organization. This is what I want. Okay, then, what do I need to do here? The first condition may remain no problem. But then how do I restrict this to only the workers in the XYZ Motors organization? Okay, let's add another condition. Okay, and then what should be it? We should have a field, right? We should, we should give me the organization correct. I should be filtering on the basis of the organization right, so note down this field is called org and superior organization organizations and superior organizations compensation. Please make a note of this field. It's a very, very important field that we use for our compensation eligibility rules, organization, and superior organizations compensation. Okay, this is. This is a field. Now let me show you the description of this field. What this field does. It returns the applicable organization and superior organizations. The description is a bit confusing. At least, I got confused the first time I saw it. What this means is it returns the name of the organization, of course, and if that organization is a superior organization, meaning if an organization has subordinates. Now let me show you the organization chart that we created. This is the organization chart that we created, right? So XYZ Motors, let's say the top-level organization XYZ Motors, this is an organization in itself, right? It's a supervisory organization agreed. Everybody agreed to this. This is a supervisory organization that we had created. Now is this organization a superior organization? Yes or no, it is right. Why? Why do we call it a superior organization? Because it has subordinate organizations. Absolutely, because this organization has subordinate organizations. That is why XYZ Motors can be considered as a superior organization as well, isn't it? Is XYZ Motors sales a superior organization? Based on the current information or based on the current organization hierarchy? 
no, right, because we we don't have any subordinate for XYZ motor sales. Okay, so what this field does for us is, if we are taking this field, it will. If you select the name of the organization and if that organization is a superior organization, then this field will include all the subordinate organizations in the hierarchy. So what that means is, if I use this one, let's say, organization and superior organization I go to frequently used and I select any in the selection list and I want to include the entire XYZ Motors organization hierarchy, then how many? Organizations should I choose here? Do I need to choose all the organizations? Or do I need to choose only a top-level organization? That is my question. Just, the top level will do right, because it says, this field says, let's look at the description again. It says it returns the applicable organization and superior organization. So if this organization is itself a superior organization, that all the organizations in the hierarchy will be automatically included, all right. So this is what this means, right? So if you are including two conditions like this, management level and organization and superior organizations equal to XYZ motors, right? So what will this do? This rule will now return only my executive vice presidents who are in the or in the XYZ Motors hierarchy.